Pascal's Law. Pascal's Law was formulated by Blaise Pascal to describe the effects of pressure within a liquid. The law states that the pressure exerted anywhere in a mass of confined liquid is transmitted undiminished in all directions throughout the liquid. The working of hydraulic devices like the hydraulic press and the hydraulic brakes are based on this principle. Best possible hydraulic system. Two pistons are fitted into two glass cylinders filled with oil and connected to one another with an oil-filled pipe. If you apply a downward force on one of the pistons, then the force is transmitted to the second piston through the oil in the pipe. Since oil is incompressible, the efficiency is very good. Thus, most of the applied force appears at the second piston. The advantage of hydraulic systems is that the pipe connecting the two cylinders can be of any length and shape, allowing it to choose any part separating the two pistons. The other advantage about a hydraulic system is that it multiplies the force applied. Press Hydraulic press is one of the applications of Pascal's law. Joseph Bremer designed the hydraulic press in 1795. Let us see how this happens. In a hydraulic press, there are two cylindrical tubes, A and B, of unequal area of cross sections fitted with valves V1 and V2. These cylindrical tubes are connected at the bottom by means of a horizontal tube. These cylinders contain watertight pistons P1 and P2, which can slide up or down within the cylinder. Observe that area of cross-section of B is greater than that of A. The tubes are filled with water in such a way that the level of water in both the tubes are equal. The smaller cylinder is called the pump plunger and the larger cylinder is called the press plunger. To press down or raise the pump plunger, there is a lever arrangement with a handle. Now when a force is applied to the piston P1, it exerts a pressure on the liquid contained in the smaller cylinder or pump plunger. According to Pascal's law, this pressure is transmitted to the piston of the press plunger and due to which the piston P2 is pushed outwards. Since the area of cross-section of the pump plunger is less than that of the press plunger, the applied force is multiplied. Thus, by applying a small force on the smaller cylinder, we can lift or compress a large weight kept on the piston of the press plunger. Hydraulic press is used for compressing bales of cotton, extracting juice from sugarcane, and for extracting oil from cotton seeds. Here you can see how a hydraulic press is used for compressing bales of cotton. When the pump plunger S1 is raised with the help of the lever, the pressure inside cylinder A decreases, and as a result, the valve V1 opens upwards and water from the tank is pushed into cylinder A. When the pump plunger S1 is pushed downwards by lowering the lever handle, the valve V1 closes due to increase in pressure in cylinder A. As a result, water from cylinder A flows to the connecting tube C. The pressure in C is greater than that in cylinder B and therefore the valve V2 opens. The water from cylinder A is forced into cylinder B due to which the press plunger S2 is raised against the fixed roof and the bales of cotton placed on the press plunger S2 get compressed. Near the bottom of cylinder B, there is a tube fitted with a release valve. After the cotton is pressed, this valve is opened so that the piston of the press plunger S2 gets lowered and the water from cylinder B is released into the tank.
also know that application of this simple law is enormous. You must have heard the term hydraulics. Hydraulic machines are machinery and tools that use liquid fluid power to do simple work. According to Pascal's law, the pressure applied to an enclosed incompressible fluid is transmitted unchanged to every part of the fluid. Here, there is a model of simple hydraulics that uses the principle. It is a U-shaped tube which has two arms and they are closed by two leak-proof pistons. Now here, the two arms have different cross-section. One arm has much larger cross-section than the other. So here, we say A2 is greater than A1 where A2 and A1 are the cross-sections of the two arms of the U-shaped tube. Now, when we apply force which is equal to F1 to left piston, then it will create pressure which is equal to F1 divided by A1. As we know, pressure is equal to force by area. Now, the cross-section of A1 is small. So, we can generate greater amount of pressure easily by applying a moderate amount of force. Now, this pressure will transmit equally throughout the fluid and reach the larger tube. Now, here in the larger piston, the pressure would be F1 by A1. So, the total force working on the larger piston would be F2 and force as we know is pressure multiplied by total area. Here, Pressure is equal to F1 divided by A1 and area is equal to A2. So what is F2? F2 is equal to force divided by area. So this becomes equal to F1 divided by A1 multiplied by A2. Now in case you have not noticed, the upward force applied on the second tube or the second piston is A2 times the force we applied on the smaller tube or the piston. So we see force gets multiplied many times. Thus, we can generate enough push to lift a heavy car by applying a much smaller downward push in the smaller piston that is in the left arm. When the brakes are applied, the foot pedal is pushed due to which pressure is exerted on the fluid in the master cylinder. This pressure is transmitted equally and undiminished throughout the fluid and to the pistons of the wheel cylinder. Therefore, the pistons get pushed outwards and the brake shoes get pressed against the rim of the wheel due to which the motion retards. On releasing the pressure on the pedal, the return spring forces the pistons of the wheel cylinder back and the fluid flows back into the master cylinder. Hope you will remember this the next time you see a driver applying brakes.